Hey, welcome back. Welcome. Never mind. It's in reverse. He's something else. But he's ours. He's ours. He's all ours. <laughs> I love him. Oh man, I love him. All right, ready? What? Five. Welcome back to Stay Tuned. Uh, I'm Tony Angelo, and today I figured I have a super nice Firebird. I can't really drive anywhere. It's got a blower and these two glossy stacks sticking out of the hood. I've got a really nice one. What if I got a really grimy one, right? Can you still buy a decent muscle car and go fast for pretty cheap? Let's find out. We're here uh, up in the Pocono Mountains, and I'm looking at this, a 1980 Pontiac Firebird with a 400 and a little bit of camshaft in it. Obviously, not the same as the 74, but guess what? I'm kind of loving this thing. I found it on Facebook, it's gotta go, and we're gonna try to make a deal for it. Please take a second and go over to the Stay Tuned merch store. We've got a rack of shirts from the original Stay Tuned shirt, Angelo's Gym. We're gonna lose the shop, and there's lots of stickers too. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so what are we looking at? It's definitely got some rust repair in the middle of it, but the rest of it is pretty solid. Yes, yeah, some of the patch in here, and it's really messing it, it off. off. Okay. Okay. Um, other than these two spots in the floor here, I'll show you. Yep. That almost looks to me like someone was trying to access something. Oh, I unless see. Unless it you're was saying. just unless it was just rotted at. I would think rotted, areas. and it's just not that bad though. Yeah. But yeah, you can give it. And a it's an and eighty, it but it's got a seventy-seven front end on it. Yep. It's weird. It's there. It's like very solid in most of the spots, mm -hmm. and then it must have had maybe the. The windshield leaks or something and you you said you had it you just bought it to fix it up and sell I, it basically yeah i mainly bought it to flip it and just ended up not having the time to do it yeah it happens oh, that part's pretty good this temp gauge work yeah don't go down there Listen, you hand your impulse buy right over to me, yep, and I'll perfect. ferry it down the road. We'll figure this out. <laughs> All right, okay. so lots of trim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the trunk itself does look pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, old breaker ignition setup in here. It's got a lot of trim, which, I, you know, that's good. Cause I wouldn't mind putting it on. I want to spray it, like I said, right, the same thing. Flat black it. Barb, hate, he hates it. He likes it the way it, or Russo thinks we should leave it. That's, I like the look. I wouldn't mind it being like one color with some shiny wheels. But. You and every other guy. Yeah, <laughs> whatever, man. Pass, we got, we got covered. That part, we're good at. Going, great. Slowing, not so great. Oh, and uh, another thing I wanted to mention. I, I thought I told you, but it must have been somewhere else. Um, the double pumper, I'm pretty sure the fuel pump is a little bit too weak to keep up with the back bowl. Okay. Because you, once you start going, it feels like it wants to run decent, and then it's like, there's like a flat spot. So that's kind of what I think it might be. Um, I could be completely wrong. But when you're revving it up, it's fine. Once it's under a load, it seems like it has more potential, but it doesn't quite reach it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, should we take it up the road and see what it does? Is that right? Yeah, yeah right. we can do it. Let's Just do be it. careful. That's yeah, for it. sure, for sure. <laughs> Something like this, my normal cruise route, you go right up the road about an eighth mile, quarter mile. Yeah, perfect. There's like a little strip mall or pizza shop or whatever it is on the left hand side. Yeah, Spin whip around. in there. Yeah. You said the lights work and stuff? Yep. Okay, well, let's give her a route. Every car guy's got a cruise route. Yeah, gotta have a cruise route. Gotta have a shakedown, shakedown section. He reminded me about the brakes. What do you think, boys? Load it 
on the trailer. Is that the one today? Ooh, that's the one. They got a long shut down in Maple Grove. I'm, I'm not gonna say. I'm, like, I'm not gonna lie. It's more rough than I thought. Like it's the panels. It's definitely more rough. The panels so that are probably pretty good. That the Maple floor Grove's got a long runoff. The floor that's not there. Yeah. The fender. Uh, we messed up. We should have brought some. One of the tires is a square, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> The rear shocks aren't disconnected. My new buddy Jim, Dustin swears that he just found out at the same time. <laughs> I believe him. Seems like a nice guy. The cool thing was, I'm pretty sure it spun from the roll back there. Oh, yeah, that's exciting. Some good, some bad. It seems to run okay. Uh, a lot of ventilation. It like started shaking real hard. That we once we hit like 40. Good. Real bad. Like either it's lo tires losing a belt or something. We actually got out. Rear shocks aren't connected to the I actual rear axle, uh, and they're not for an F body. They're like loops. They're like a round one that somebody drilled a hole in and probably. Uh. It's an interesting scenario. Will it make sure. it down the track? Will it make know, it down the that. track like that? I don't, no way. There's no way this thing <laughs> goes down the track. This is not gonna happen. Like, yeah, we went sick probably 55 and it was like about, the whole thing felt like it was gonna explode. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was wildness. So, you know, it needs some work for sure. It does need a little work. I'd say. I don't think we're getting it down the track anytime soon. <laughs> You know, it needs at least a week, like a week's worth of work to make it halfway decent. And I'm not even talking about maybe putting it in primer so it's moderately less embarrassing to drive around. Although I don't hate it. It's got, it's got some, it's got some character. presence. It's got presence. It's got character. The worst part about all of this, besides the giant holes missing from the fenders and the square tire, is the fact that the entire underside is red. The yeah. entire underside like is red. Like a fire engine. Like the subframe, red. the inner fenders. The, the the control arms, the drive shaft, the rear axle, like it's like Every the single. truck times 10, but worse. Yeah. It's like the Dodge we bought, which had like a bunch of random red stuff. You guys know, like, just leave it black. Nobody, you know, this car's never doing a wheelie where everyone's gonna go, wow, the underside's red, that's so tight. Yeah, nobody's seeing the underside. No one's seeing that thing, dude. Hydro cars are the best at that, they, yeah. chrome plates. Yeah, it's that's way cooler. Pinstripe the bottom, that's tight, yeah, cool. This is another. I want to buy that 69 Firebird. Right. I want to buy it. 69 Firebird? I texted him. I met. I'm F fifth. Blah. Facebook messaged him and I called him. This is in Allentown. I'll text JR. We'll be there in no time. Alright. We got options. I mean, are we buying this thing? We're not buying this thing. No. Should we flip a coin? No. No, everyone's over it. We can flip mm -hmm. a coin. We don't no. have the time. Heads, we space. buy it. Tails, we uh, don't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not what I meant. That Tails, we don't buy it. That is what you meant. <laughs> We don't, no, we don't. Heads, we, we don't, don't buy it, tails, tails we don't buy it. That's yeah. what I meant to say. Yeah. All right, fine. Dude. No, I think we're, I think we're gonna pass on the Firebird. It's cool for us with the S10 blown apart in the shop right now. I was just looking for something to run around in and have fun. All right, I'm back in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good. Good. Ice cream? Good. Lieutenant Dan, ice cream. Somebody in there. Mmm. I gotta talk about 
I love the vibe in places like this. This is tight. This is a time capsule, dude. Like at some point, this was full of people, and there was like a salad bar. It's awesome, man. This is what's at. We are at an old school drive in, uh, right? In Lee Hiking, VA, which is like up in the Pomino Mountains. So, like, you know, straight out of the 80s, which is awesome. It's cool. It's got these old tables. I think it had a salad bar at one point, and we're just scrambling to see, like, while we're up here, are there any other good deals up here? I'll, you know, kind of beat it and get my hands on something. I really want. Like 75 Nova or like uh, Valiant or a Dart or some Duster, you know, something I can just drive around town and have fun with and leave places and not worry about. Something maybe in primer, a little mild V8 in it, just something I can like really just hop into, not super care about and drive around. So we're looking, we're doing a hustle. But there's some good stuff up here. We're kind of like out in the middle, you know, uh, out, of, out of our own way. So yeah. there's some good up here. 20 mile radius, like Harmony. See what we find. 20 miles. Come on. Like, what is it? Skylark. 26 Skylark. Ooh. White on red. Best color combo. Whoa. 76 Chevelle. Is the attraction to these that you have all the parts already or because you like these? Well, I like them. Uh, it's a car from Drive, dude. I saw them and I was like, that's the weirdest. Coolest. It is a weird car. And they're good, man. And they also drive incredible. Like, you know, really? these were NASCAR. Yeah, 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 like yeah, front yeah. foot, like flat front ones with like a leading edge, like super sports. Do you know what's what? Yeah. What'd you get? One of them's. I mean, you got the same. I mean, he got chocolate. You, you got, got the those are These are black and whites. These are? Yeah. yeah. That's it, man. Thank you. So I've been looking for like a fun, low key street car that jams that I can build into something really fun. Something proper muscle or something like, you know, pre 1990, but I really like pre 1980s. And I was banging around. I was like, you know, it'd be fun to have another Mopar. And I saw a 1970 scam, body clean, pristine, no rust, in primer. It was sick. The guy wanted 5,800, 5,000 for it. And then the next day it was 5,800, which it immediately tipped up me off in my heart. I was like, I don't like that. That feels like that might be tough to deal with because he probably got a bunch of uh, messages about it. And then it got weird. And I just did my best to buy it. I was like, that's a great deal. It had an even recorder end in it. It had wheels on it. It was like, you set know, you need to have, you set up for a big block. Didn't have the inner fenders cut out. And I, this is the messaging that we had back and forth. I'll just read it to you. Now, if this is the guy, if you're the guy watching this, let me know. I, I want to let you know just deeply from the bottom of my heart, you are a complete whack ass and you're the worst. <laughs> and this is not how you treat people. Okay. Where is it? Here we go. <clears throat> Ready? I say, hey. Yo, any rust in this thing, man? It looks really clean. What rear end is in here? Oh, the and then I come back, you know, a little while later, half hour. Are the fender wheels cut out? I was back with, nope. Perfect answer for all my questions. I said, hey, is it eight and three quarter? He said, yes, with 391 sure grip. Great. That's awesome. I said, immediately, okay, cool. Can you give me your number and I'll give you a ring tomorrow? Nothing. Uh, the next morning, you know, around noon. Hey, let me know when is a good time to call you and let me get that number, please. Nothing. Uh, 20 minutes later, I say, or you can call me, I give him my number. Nothing. The next day in the morning, hey man, still very interested. Let me know if we can get on the phone and sort this out. He says, I won't be home till Friday. I said, okay, that's no problem. I'm actually heading up to Syracuse Friday and could be there around two Friday if that works. I can come with a trailer. If not, I can come down Saturday evening on my way down. Let me know, thanks. Immediately, 20 minutes later, listed as pending was the most frustrating. I'm like, not to us. Not to me, like, not to me, not to anyone. Yeah. yeah, nothing, that's it. And I went, so I said to him like, hey man, I'm trying, I've been trying to buy this car for three days. Like, what's the deal? Don't be that guy. And I don't know, like, are we in a place where I gotta go? I will pay, like, I don't want to make a deal without being in front of the car. It's such a waste of time. You show up, that's not what you think. The pictures, the information aren't complete. You gotta show up, which is fine. And if people want to say, hey, give me a deposit, I'll hold it till you come. That's fine too. This was none of that. It's gonna be hot for like, I want a sweet, like maybe primer or faded out, just to something to kick around for the summer and I just can't find it. It's real hard to find. Yeah. All right, so, so far, no good on the search for an affordable, fun muscle car. It's really tough. I've learned the way stuff goes now with the online marketplaces, it's like boom, boom, boom. You should just be like ready when a great deal comes up, keep your options open. Like you're like, okay, I wanna, 85 Mustang, but then like 
uh, an 88 Monte Carlo shows up, you just buy it. Just buy it. Soft drawer <laughs> cash is king. Soft drawer cash. Yeah. Just remember that. Keep it going. Anyway, we're gonna get head back home. I got a couple feelers out on a couple different things. The list is too weird and long to discuss. If anything pops up, we're gonna go grab it. The second car we went to look at was another Firebird, this time a 69 with a 427 Chevy big block in it and a turbo 400 transmission. So we were very excited about it and it turned out to be way better in pictures and in person was a mess. Uh, just too much rust. So we quickly made our exit. We got... It feels heavy to me right here. Is it? A piece of wood. All right, so we popped into the Russo compound for some fresh pizza, homemade pizza tour we're doing here, uh, which has been killer. This, those cars were a complete letdown. This one is not. Uh, that 69, from the pictures online, man, it looked pretty clean and pretty solid. And they asked the guy, hey, what's the rust like? He's like a little bit here, a little bubbling here. But as soon as I walked up, I was like, this is too much for us. I was, look, man, a 69 Firebird with a 427 and the Turbo 400 and a 9 inch. At one point, that car that car was awesome. That car was super cool, but right now, that was just too much rust. I knew it. The thing was, like, we showed up. The second I walked in, I'm like, well, no, I'm not buying it. It's too much. It is. And I, like, my brain was like, how long do I have to stand here and pretend to look at this car that I'm definitely not buying until I go get some pizza at Rooster's house? But the pizza is delicious. Look. Mushroom pie. This is saving the, the day. Saving yeah, the delicious. Day. Mm. Mm. Earthy, rich, delicious. Mm. Here's those pop, just slinging pies back there. We're watching the fills. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Where are they from? Yeah. We are back on the hunt for an affordable muscle car. It is harder than ever to find something decent and cheap that you can get your hands on these days. But we've already failed twice looking at those two different Firebirds. One was super, super rusty. One was just kind of a mess and we wanted to take it to the track and it just was too far away. It had some holes in the floor. So we failed on finding a car, but we did, we did succeed on finding some killer pizza at Russo's house. His dad is a saint, and if you ever get the chance, I recommend the restaurant that's out back in their house. 10 out of 10. <laughs> uh, so I've just been scouring the internet, and here's what I've learned. Number one, you can't force it, okay? These deals come and go really quickly, so like you're not gonna be able to sit down and go, oh, there's a hot one out today, I know it. It's like, just kind of check every day, be consistent, and try to find what you want. And then the other things, these are the big tips. Number one, be flexible. You think you're gonna find or you wanna drive a 70s Chevelle? It might be a 77 Chevelle. You wanna buy a Nova? It might be something totally different. Uh, I wanted a Firebird, guess what? We're not gonna look at a Firebird today. It's just not the way it goes. Number two, be willing to travel a little bit because the farther you make that area when you're searching online it doesn't seem like a big deal you're like oh 250 you know let me, yeah. 100 miles let me just bump it up and bump it up and then your butt has to go 250 miles to get a car so if you're in it to win it that's what you're gonna do and the last thing is move quickly okay if something pops up i don't exactly know how people are doing it but it's going up and going down so quickly i think the best move is if you like a car at all try to get some money in that person's pocket as just a deposit hold it until you can get there and put some eyes on that thing and then go from there so that's the deal we are about five minutes away from a guy who has a sweet body shop big dodge guy and he's got a bunch of cars that have to move. That's the other thing. If you happen to find someone who's really looking to unload a car or a bunch of cars in a short amount of time, that's a pretty good scenario to be in as a buyer. And that's what we found. We have just arrived. This is a body shop where the owner of the building told this guy he had about a month to get out. He said he's been here 18 years. He's a big Mopar guy. He's got a 64 Polara and another parts car that comes with it that I'm very interested in. It's supposed to be a 383 car that runs at, or ran pretty recently the last couple years and my favorite part about all this he's got four or five or six Dodge trucks D150s and there's a guy here named Barb who really is hot for a D150 or D100 but he swears he can't he doesn't have the space in his yeah, life for it right yeah, now yeah, yeah. and all that right, his wife will out. murder him if he brings one home so we'll see that might happen we'll see because there's one oh and there's one 
They're everywhere. That thing is gorgeous. Didn't you say this was like 30,000 miles or something? Yeah, that's like a 19,000 original mile farm truck, he said. Man, if only that had more bed on the back. I'm interested in this Ram Charger. That thing is, that's not even online. Ram Chargers. The, the battery's in the trunk. Okay. Um, well, gotcha. This is off of 77, but it's got a big holly on it. Okay. Um, nice. You can pop that valve, look in there, and see the butter's like brand new in there. It's clean as a whistle. Okay, yeah, it looks pretty it's, solid. No, it's been, it, it was just rebuilt. This is, the, the guy told me he just, he never ran it. So I said, I'll take the motor. Okay. For the, uh, somebody started putting quarters on his car, and they didn't know what he was doing. Okay. And so I finished the quarters on it. So it's got, and that's a 383? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it really needs quarters. You can see here. It's certainly got some rust. It's not the worst, and Mopar is in this part of the world definitely rust pretty hard. I really just wanted to kick around, so I'm not super worried about it. What I do like is that engine under the hood, 7383. That's a pretty hot piece. I like the Polara. The motor is sick. Perfect. The body is, ugh. it's all right. You know, the frame is good, but it's is rust it? on everything. The frame, frame you know, it's unibody, but like the important parts are good. The frame, the integrated the rails board. and stuff, the you torque like box, the torque boxes, like, yeah, that stuff's good. Engine the, bay looks clean. The cowl is rusted underneath where he painted it. And behind the rear window. It would be like, get it, maybe mob around in it for a while, take hope that motor and put raining. something else, get that motor running top, you know. Yeah, I hope it doesn't rain. It's going to rain through, you know, it's got holes in it. Yeah. So what about these trucks, though? Which one of these do you want to leave with? Come on, let's make a package deal. Let's get you a truck. Stop. Let's do it. That red one is gonna, sick. That's a pretty good deal. It's really honestly. What do you want? Three, you three, four, four. Three. I'm so you confused. Three for that. Four for that. That's a painted. That one painted for four is. Yeah, I know. Good. That for four is killer. His Polaris for five. I don't. I don't know about all that. Three for the Polara. Yeah, well, I was kind of come in and be like, listen, we'll give you 4,500. I'm leaving with the Polaris and one of these trucks. It's not the worst deal, I guess. That one will drive us home. You want to drive that home? I don't think so. Why not? I it's clean, think. dude. I know it's clean. You can leave it to the shop. You don't even have to tell your wife you bought it yet. Oh, I don't. She doesn't care about that. I don't want to watch. Does she watch the channel? Yeah, she She'll see it. it. All right. Yeah, just All kidding. Right. It's mine. Okay, we have a plan. It turns out I cannot peer pressure Barb into buying a truck he doesn't want. It's fine. Uh, the Polaris, I like. I don't want to make him get that one that's been sitting forever all fired up with an old garbage gas and with no coolant in it. So what I'm going to try to do is make a deal for him around three grand. I'll take the parts car now. We'll come back in a couple days with a new battery, a fresh, gas, fresh carburetor. Fresh carburetor. Yeah, and see if we can get that thing fired up on our, on our own terms, put it in gear and kick it out of here. That'll be, that'll be the deal. Let's see what happens. All right. Okay, so after a brief discussion, we came up with a program. I'm going to buy both of those 64 Polaris for 3500 bucks, and that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Yeah. I feel good about it. One of them has a 1973-83 motor. He says it's out of a Roadrunner. It might be like an HP. Uh, it's a pretty burly looking motor. It looks very clean. Everything under that hood looks good out of the other car. Um, but here's what I said. I said, let me take the parts car home now. Okay, I gave him a little bit of money. Take the parts car home now, and then we're gonna come back with fresh battery and a, and a new carburetor and probably prime that motor, get it fired up right so we don't do any damage to it because it's been sitting for a long time. I'm very excited about it. We'll be back in a couple of days, and uh, we're taking that thing home right now. We loaded up the Polara parts car and then headed home. It'll be fine. It's a new day, and we are in the truck heading back to pick up the good Polara, and unbeknownst to Barb, we have a little surprise for him. Just going. Yeah, another thing you should be aware of is, like, the way the market is right now, you're just not going to get them all. Yeah. Unless you're, like, literally, anytime a good deal, there's plenty of mediocre deals on Facebook. When a good one comes up, it's you got to be, like, yeah. immediate. immediate, and, like, yo, you're just not going to, There's you're going to be home with your kids, or you're going to be at work, and someone's going to just grab you it. You have to be in the truck all the time, really. I don't even you know. Have to be driving. I don't even know what you have we're to do. We're all call constantly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was a good deal. The Polar is a great deal, but like, yeah, Barb wanted, has been looking for a D, 
100 for a long time. He had one and sold it. Yeah. And there was a white one that came up cheap. Last night it was gone in like no time. Hours. No time. Yeah, that's a bummer. So I found it. I was like literally walking out the door yesterday. It was like two minutes to five. And this came up, which is exactly what I want. Two door, short bed, red interior, manual transmission, the body I want for 800 And it has the early grill. That's oh, the kicker. Like that's the kicker. 72 oh, to 80 all have that. So I mean, there's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like everything would be it's fine. It's not it's just the like, grill. What I really like about those trucks is I love the dash. Yeah. I love the interior. I was going to say, the dash is really cool. My 73 had the sweetest yeah, dash. It was so sweet. What happened? You were messing up? What happened? Yeah, I messaged him. It was up for two hours. I messaged him. And I texted him. Oh, I didn't even get back to you. Yeah. Never even got back you to me. You got back to me for like two seconds. There's Johnny, other guys coming to look at it tomorrow. I texted Tony. I was like, yeah, I just messaged this guy. And he goes, so did I. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, you know, sold in three hours. Yeah. You gotta be really banging on the door these days. Yeah. Two hours, sure. I thought I was banging on the door. It was listed for two hours. Yeah. But it was also like a five thousand dollar truck. You should have spam message or something. I don't yeah, know. I guess. I don't know. You should have took a like money shot, like with the money up your arm. Yeah, and so just be like, I'm on my way. There's like eight hundred singles. <laughs> yeah. So unbeknownst to Bark, was about to walk up. Is that the reason that white truck sold so quickly last night? Is that I ran out and I bought it for him. So later on, maybe after we pick up this Polara, we'll show it to him. Here he comes. All right, we're back at the body shop to dig out this 64 Polara. We brought a bunch of supplies. We're gonna try to get it fired up, make sure that motor is nice and happy, air in the tires, see if it'll drive, and we've gotta drive it out of here because it's not. we're not pushing it down this, this lane. So, so yeah, it's too much. So the goal is get it fired up and get it out of here. Mark swears yeah. it'll run. I'm ready to do it. You ready to do it? Let's yeah. go. I'm very excited about this thing. All right. So we started this party looking at like Firebirds and GTOs and like, you know, real typical muscle cars because I want something to drive around that's really fun and pretty cool. And we wound up on a 64 Dodge Polara. But here's the thing you may not know why I'm so into this car is that Polaras, 63s, 64s were all essentially like factory, nasty, super stock racers for Dodge. There were max wedge cars, there were four speed cars, there were altered wheelbase cars. These things really have like a nasty lineage, believe it or not, as boxy and kind of like old man style as this thing sort of looks. In 64 and 65 and 63, these were really, really, really as hot as they got. So it's pretty cool. We're gonna stick with that vibe. Obviously it's got the 7383 in it. I can't wait to get that fired up, but this is, so this is your grandpa's racer. That's what it is. And I'm gonna drive it. Right now I'm going to air the tires up when I have 7 pounds in it. We'll put 28 in all of them and then try to get this motor refreshed and revived. If this thing won't run again, we're going to lose the shot. I'm wearing the wrong shirt. We're going to lose the shot! So the best part of this car is this 1970 383. He says it came out of a Roadrunner, so it could be like an HP motor. It could be pretty burly. Uh, and we don't want to damage it, reviving it. It hasn't run in many years, at least three, maybe more. The car's basically never driven while well, he's owned it for 15. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is number one, change the oil out, put in fresh oil, pre-lube it. So manually spread it all around the motor by just priming the oil pump with a drill, getting it everywhere. We're gonna put a fresh carburetor on it. We're not gonna try to run any of the gas that's sitting in the tank. It's probably just varnish and turpentine at this point. We brought some fresh gas and a little pump after that's going, we're gonna crank it, see what it does. We brought a new battery. We're gonna give it tons of juice and just see what this thing does. When you have an engine that's been sitting a really long time, oil drains out of where the bearings are. Oil drains out of every place that you need it when you're gonna to try to start it up and you know it's probably not gonna start right up. So if you're cranking it and cranking it and cranking it, you can do real damage. We're gonna to try to avoid that right now. Thank you. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know why I put my hand in the sock I found on the ground, but That's disgusting. That happened. I cannot even believe you just did that. I'm in it to win it, baby. That's how much I like You're this You're gonna win something. Okay. How dirty do we think this is? All right. You think I can get, oh, uh, there we go. I know. This is definitely some dinosaur juice, I'll tell you that. 
cobwebs. But it's got long tube headers, three inch exhaust all the way out. I bet you it sounds pretty good. I'm pumped to get this thing fired up. Oy. Yeah. Just dirty. Standard. Standard oil change. Okay. The ecosystem has become part of me. A little yum yum juice going in the hole here. Yeah, a good dinosaur juice, buddy. That's a good one. All right, we're coming off. 1030. All right, this engine has a distributor in the front, which is nice because we're going to pre lube it, which means spinning the oil pump, which is underneath the distributor. The distributor. We're gonna, just going to mark where the rotor is and where the housing is and just probably put it, put it right back in spot. So once we got it back in, hopefully we won't have to mess with the timing at all. So we're going to go here, rotor there, housing also there. So I'm going to line up the rotor, the housing, and this mark, and it should go right back in the same spot and fire right up, assuming that the timing is right, which is a pretty big assumption, but let's do it. Just one two-wire connector here. Hold on one second, we get this out. Yep. Get this out of your way. Mm -hmm. okay. That good? Yeah. And I, I, we don't own anything in the 60s. No. This will be it the oldest cool. car by far. Now, no, now two of them. Yeah, now two, yeah, two of them. All right, so I'm going to slide this out. Over here. That looks good. The pickup looks good. There's no garbage in it. Okay. Lay right in there. You see the camshaft. You see the lifter bores. Oh, man, they look really good. Okay, so now we're gonna pull off the oil pump drive shaft, which connects the camshaft to the oil pump and then the distributor sockets right into the top of the thing. So now the distributor's out, we're gonna pull that out, go right to the oil pump, which is actually external in this engine. Spin that thing with a drill and hopefully pump a bunch of oil all through the engine and get it ready to fire up. You know it goes back? I took a picture. Beautiful. Looks good. Not much wear. Great. Not much wear on her. All right. You know, it looks just like that. This contraption you made? Look at that thing. Cut up a little 5 sixteenths uh, Allen key. Welded a piece of threaded rod. Yeah. A priming tool. They sell these, but why not make it yourself, I guess. All right. Anytime you do this on an engine, you have to make sure you're spinning it the correct way. The oil pump on this one spins counterclockwise, just like the distributor. So I'll be essentially loosening the drill. I'll be going backwards. And it will find some load. I can feel it already. And it's moving stuff. Let's see if we can find a gauge and read some oil pressure. I was going to say, there's no way to see. Oh yeah, six, 80 pounds. How much? 80. 80? That'll do. 70. I'm not going as fast. I'm just going to hold it for a minute or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so it is gonna live just about there. All right. This is gonna slide, as it goes in, it's gonna rotate, so you have to lead it a little bit. I wanna go in the middle. No? Okay, You're perfect. Me. Nothing. I didn't know if you were gonna have clearance on the side of the and It's gonna there. spin in. Yeah, not too much. Okay, I gotta go back. You can see that, it's right there. See all right in there? I can. All right, let's see if we can get everything lined back up. I marked the valve cover. Can you get that junk out of there without putting mm -hmm. it in the motor? Yeah, I'm gonna hold it like that. Is that all right? Yeah, it's got that quirky attitude. Mm -hmm. I love it. We'll do for now. Grab that carburetor and let's rock. Get that piece of art on here. Yeah, there she is. She rides on everything. <laughs> Old Faithful. Old Faithful right here. It was just the back one. Okay. I don't know. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. See how tight this is? Well, I'll just uh, bend it a lot. Okay. Like over the top? I'll just kick it up. Okay. Boom. I think this motor is bone stock, which is fine. Still, 
if it's unmolested, a, man. If it's an eight, so that, that makes me happy because it's got an iron real Mopar four barrel manifold on it. That means it's probably the better motor, the HP from a Roadrunner. Because if it was a liter, you know, like an aftermarket aluminum four barrel, then you don't know if it was like a low horsepower, low compression, small cam 383 that somebody just slapped a four barrel and an intake on. This is mm -hmm. maybe the real deal. Yeah, and a little screw. Then I can be the guy that slaps an aluminum intake on it later. I knew that. And a big fun. cam. Let me see that kit. Booyah. On the road with Dorman. This kit is solid. Keep you out of trouble. How much wire we need? Like two feet? We going all over there? Oh, you can go into that. I believe that's gonna pick up 12 volts or right onto the right onto the main relay. Okay. That's the so that's an offer. That'd be fine. Yeah, the clippies. The clippies, huh? On the other side. That, that's the technical term. God, I get it. Yeah, it's sound it sounded cool kids, when you said dude. it. You yeah. Know, you knew exactly what I meant. It's like an unwritten word. Okay. I brought a fresh battery. So we have to mess with. Trying to find some around here and charge it up. Hell yeah. Perfect. Science. As long as you gotta just flip it around. Didn't start a fire yet. That's good. Okay. Manual. One hour photo. Oh, this is really good. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is it of this car? Bro. Let me see. No. For real? Yeah. That's this? Yeah, this oh, is the motor so swap. Oh, that's so cool. This Hang is on. sick. I'm coming around. I gotta see this. This is so cool. Dude, and that comes with this car. That's so cool. Wow. What year? Couldn't say. All right, let's run Go the on. pump. Got it? Go ahead. There he is. We brought a little holly. Hang on. Ah. You okay? I, I got to just stab myself. I'm fine. I got to go in the wrong way. There you go. Just try and go slower and aim it in the center. I'm pouring out of a bucket here, champ. Yeah, I got this cool bumpy button. Uh, it's got some fuel in it. I think I figured out how to hotwire the ignition. Uh, we don't have the keys to it, but we're in the sender. See what it does. So if you want to get, you're in there, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to clamp this with this button here. As best I can on the main post. Okay. Ready? Watch the headers. Okay. Ready? Right. Oh, she sounds good. Oh god. Uh, okay, so we forgot that part, I think. I thought we decided there was no old fuel in it. Psych. It really pumps. Woo! Oh, no, it started up instantly. Instantly. Psh, Hell yeah. Of course it did. Of course it did. Alright, All right, put that in the, your old milk jug bucket. That thing was like at top dead center. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> yeah. boom! Let me that, this amazing. <laughs> amazing. We didn't fake that. That really happened. Pretty sick. Okay, take two. We have the old fuel pump that was sucking old gas out and spraying it all over our faces and right into the fan. Into a bucket now. The fire back up. It started instantaneously. Is that you know, good Mopar wood? What's your hand? Stop the idling. Champion. Sounds oh, good. You got a game in there, I think. Give us pump a it out. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the face. Where'd all that? So well, I can still see it. I don't think it was gas. I might have been water. So the when the gas. Oh, the fan. The fan's picking up the gas. The vapor is going into the thing and spraying. I'm gonna say the whole system. The whole whole ecosystem there. So Hang on. It works together to get the gas vapor in my eyeball. My contacts are gonna be permanently glued to my face. Sure it stays submerged in the bucket. Oh, nice. Ugh. All right, I'm 
very excited. It sounds amazing. I gotta stop revving it up because I keep getting gas in my eyes. Still dump it in the bucket? Hard to see a little bit. That's it. 383, fire right up. Boom. Nice 60 job. PSI oil at, at, at idle there. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like a, sounds incredible. Uh, let's get something over the carburetor because this is disgusting. Yep. Uh, we could probably put the old air filter and just lay it on there. For lay now. it on there or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. Find of the week right here. Footprint gas pedal. You still want to take this 400? Tanner's cracked. Bob can't wait to polish this thing. He won't even wait till we get home. So much so that I found this cracked bottle that's on the floor. There's like 800 years of overspray from this body shop on here. That one. Yeah. Same as the 7.7. Okay. down, I think. Oh, yeah. She's in gear. Yeah, it's one of the brakes are probably off. They're probably so stuck solid. Yep, yeah, stuck, yeah. Right? You ready, Tony? Yeah. So far. Trying again. Oh yeah, baby. Go. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. This one's good. Stop. Okay. Back her up, baby. We may not be cruising this down the street tonight. <laughs> no. Where? Once we get this over, we'll try it. Hang on. Go. One more. Okay. Keep going. You good. Drain it out a little bit. old gross body shop 20 years of body shop grime top to bottom but i'm pretty stoked feels good, dude. man it feels pretty good man look at her Woo! that was a fight here she is it's different in the sun boy it's gonna need a little quarter panel attention and front fender probably or something whatever this let's just make cool. let's make it go fast all right let's go it does do a little bit of something what? It'll hold the brake a little bit. Is that where you want it? Tell me where. Yeah, it's fine. All right, you gotta you put hear? a strap on it. There's no park in this thing. Okay, give me a second. No park? <laughs> Let's get out of here. There was a point and it was running in that tiny room and I had no brakes and no ability to turn it off and the wheels were stuck and everyone was like, just floor it till the wheels break loose. And I was like, this is the dumbest idea of all time. I, if they break loose, I'm going through this cabinet or somebody's face. But we got it done. Eventually it was like spinning. I'm in there spinning tires. I can't see anything. I can't even turn the car off. 10 out of 10 experience. Would recommend. 
Five star. Is that really what the GPS is telling you? Yeah, that's what it says. Get out of here. <laughs> no way. Give me that thing. <laughs> here you go. Happy birthday. What the f I bought you that truck, buddy. No way. I did. No, it's all yours. Get the fuck out of here. Basically, Bar's been looking for a D-150. He really wanted an early one with this grill set up. This is the last year of it. Short bed, short cab. He found it online, and he was stoked on it. He messaged the guy. I messaged the guy, and the guy was like, I got a guy coming tomorrow to check it out. And unbeknownst to him, I was like, it was super cheap. So I hit him up, and I was like, no negotiations. I can be there in like a half hour. There she is, bud. Woo! I believe right, so you said it. Dude, the that best, exactly what you the best this morning, you're like, that truck sold instantly, Zimmy. <laughs> you knew? Yeah, yeah. You know last night? Yeah, I came last night. Get the. <laughs> there All it right. is, isn't I don't even off. know what's happening right now. It's solid, too. I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> I know. Thank you. Okay, that is it for this episode of Stay Tuned. Uh, what a crazy adventure. We showed you how it's still possible to buy cheap old classic muscle cars you just gotta hustle you gotta be flexible and you gotta be fast we were all three this time barb got a truck i got a couple of polaris and uh, we got lots and lots of work to do on these things so we will see you guys next time please stay tuned don't forget to like and subscribe we'll see you